right, welcome back, you degenerates. Morgan in the host seat tonight. I've got Billy here. I've got Greggy here. Boys, how we doing? I hear we're having a tough day. It's the worst day ever. It's awful. Greg it's is crazy. Like, you know, I, we were on such big highs yesterday. Billy, in our group chat, we were having a good day. Everybody was getting along, but Billy was just hitting it left and right. And now, Billy, what happened, dude? What happened? Nothing happened. The cards didn't work in my favor. It's not like I didn't do the homework. I did all the research. I did. I thought the plays were the right plays. And, Greg, not to bash on you, mm -hmm. but you've been cold as ice. And the only bet that I placed today, that one was a pick that you gave me. So, <laughs> shout out to you. I appreciate you for giving you. me some life. Thank you. But, yeah. you know, we'll be back tomorrow. You know, I'm, I'm not worried. I'm, I'm upset if you watched... Our little teaching, uh, the birth of the degenerate, you see me fa fa literally fall out of a chair. So, you know, I, I feel better. I hit my head. I'm a, little, I'm a little woozy, but I'm back. You know, I don't have any more money on the line. Well, I do, but we nothing do. that counts towards my we record. We just bet on the Sichuan Blue Whale, so. Yeah, but forget. nothing, nothing that counts exciting. towards my official record. <laughs> so, uh, it is riveting Chinese basketball play right now. Well, I'm, I'm happy for you guys that uh, you still have balance to play with. How, uh, how's it been for you the past 24 hours, Greg? Give us an idea oh, of life oh, of Greg right now. The past 24 hours, I've had a new least favorite day of the week for the past five days. <laughs> Man, that's a rough way to put it. Yeah, Mondays were my least favorite until Tuesday came along. <laughs> and then Wednesday came along, and Tuesday I... You know, ended up being wonderful. You know, it's it's been tough. Yeah, I don't mean to, we don't mean to laugh, but that that is that is one phenomenal way to present how bad of a week you've had. Yeah, thank you. As um, as you can tell, everybody listening right now, you know the boys. It's been a tough week. I've had a pretty good week so far, but I'm not here to gloat right now. We're out on on a pirate ship out in the middle of the ocean, and the winds are not blowing for Billy and Greg at all. We are well, sitting I, there, dead in the sun, just melting away. This is what happened to me in the past, I don't know, let's call it 36 hours, because I bet on a 12 o'clock game yesterday, it's really 48 hours at this point. I went 6-1 and one on the college basketball picks that I posted. I also took a couple first halves that I didn't post, which also hit, which led me to a f full day of 9-1. and one. In, co in college basketball. I hit two hockey bets yesterday. I I was doing great. You know, besides the Nets, I was doing great. Today, I went one and six and two because I didn't post the Iowa first half, which fucking pushed because they fouled. These teams, I don't want to go into too much of a tangent, Morgan. Cut me off when you're had enough of my bullshit. I don't understand. With one second left, teams are fouling. First of it's the first half for Iowa. And then the Mount St. Mary's, not Mount St. Mary's, the St. Mary's Loyola game, 0.8 seconds. They're down three. You can't get a shot off in 0.8 fucking seconds. I'm smiling right now because it, it's blowing my mind. Why you would it's foul. Been, you can't get a shot been, off. It's been a day. It's been, you know, everyone listening right now. The Anything that could go wrong has gone wrong for these two in the past 24 hours. I mean, I feel like when I went to bed last night, I remember Greg sending his card to us, and he was loving his card. He could not be more excited. And we just recorded a special. Uh, it will come out also that Billy and I were in, and Billy was talking about walking around with a 10-inch cock because his, his card was so good. Um, this is, it, it happens, you know, there's the highs and lows of gambling. That's part of like, we're not going to win every single bet. We're not all going to be shooting 58% from the NBA field. Um, you know, it, it happens every now and then, <laughs> every now and then it happens when the bad days come and go, but they do move, get better. You would it's only money, right boys? It's only money. Yeah. Unless you're bet, out of it. So we yeah. can't bet anymore. Ain't that right, Greggy? Yep. 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 <laughs> That's why I'll be back at it again tomorrow. But, all right, so tonight's episode, we're doing some special things. 
It's going to be a heavy football episode for us. We got some big football season. We have Greg's Corner coming up with some MMA talk towards the end of the show. Um, so let's talk briefly. You know, let's, let's look at what we got tomorrow. We got some games going on. Billy, you got anything? We're going to start with you. You got anything interesting that you're looking at tomorrow with Colin the College Hardwood anywhere? Um, I'm still waiting for lines to come out. And I'd, we're, we're going to start a segment. We'll, we'll finish off with it about uh, money line dogs. We're going to try to up the ante every week. But um, I really haven't, after the day I've had, I really haven't looked too hard into the card. I did already place Michigan minus three, even though Purdue cucked me the other day. I will not waver. I will not fall. Michigan is the much better team. They're we will stand still, tall. Yes, like we will stand tall. My cock will grow large. <laughs> Michigan State <laughs> is already a, a minus four. Oh. I took it at a minus three. I expect that to go really to a minus six. There's no value in a minus six. Michigan's the better team on the road, in a tent, in the middle of the ocean, on Fight Island with Greg and his picks. It doesn't matter. I'm taking Michigan. Um, Just an early look at the lines. I'm going to be playing probably Cal State Fullerton uh, money line because Hawaii had to fly 800 miles to go to play that game because they live in the middle of the ocean. That's what I'll be looking at. Um, as well, I'll, I'll be back on Boise against Fresno. Fresno still stinks last time I checked. Boise had a slow first half when they played on what they on Tuesday, which they hardly covered. That won't happen again. Boise is going to blow them out this time. Um, San Diego State is playing Air Force. I'm going to be taking the under on that as long as it's still above 120, 125. It's currently sits at 127. I'm kind of just waiting for some of these live bets to possibly hit, so I have a little bit more of a bankroll to play with before I uh, dive deep into the college basketball. The lines are still moving around a lot. You know, Today's lines, they move like crazy. That's so, true. We, I remember waking up this morning to text from you guys, and the lines were just going nuts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Couldn't deal with it. But what about anything else? You got any other before we go big into football? Anything else you're looking at tomorrow, or any other sport we got this weekend that you're interested in? I mean, for me, I mean, I, I'm like I'm a day by day guy. Okay. Like I know, like you look ahead a couple days. Like for me, like. I'm probably I'm staying away from the Washington Capitals. Is it, aren't they? Isn't that? Aren't they not playing? No, they're the playing. Capitals, they're the Capitals playing. right now are getting a goal and a half. Yeah, against the Sabers. Yeah, yeah, they just don't have Ovechkin or. Uh, no, like I would just, I, just like, I looked up the lines and like I saw that game. I was under the assumption that they weren't even going to wind up playing that game. Um. I don't know, the Avalanche are kind of fucking me today. Like, I like them against the Ducks, but not enough to lay the one and a half. I know hockey's been a little strange. A little zigzag theory's been working, you know, probably better than college basketball. And unless Morgan finds me an absolute winner in the, the NBA, I am staying far away from that. So, I don't like any of it. It I, sounds I like tune in, tune into our picks that come out yeah. daily on the hour by the hour from Billy. He will say he has no picks now, but he will end tomorrow with about fifty-seven different picks. Um, <laughs> so let's, switch it, let's switch it over. Let's switch it over to Greggy here. What do you What do you got on the taps for this weekend? What are you looking at? We'll get uh, into right. your MMA stuff in a minute and NFL stuff in a minute. But what are you looking at? Other sports. Cool. Um, yeah. So tomorrow's uh, college basketball slate. I'm with Billy on Michigan minus three versus Purdue. You know, they're on the road. Uh, Purdue seems to be a tough building to play in for a lot of teams. Uh, Big Ten's tough, but I think Michigan is just a, you know, they're the, one of the toughest teams in the country, and uh, they're the best team in the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. You know, arguably – Better than Iowa. Some would probably say otherwise, but for sure look, better than Iowa. You know, looking Iowa at shit game, they put up today. Yeah, looking at tonight's game, you know, I would take I would take Michigan most days of the week. Uh, but minus three is a good enough number on the road where I feel comfortable with it. 
I'm also uh, with Billy on Operation Fade Hawaii. So I am on Cal State Fullerton Moneyline. Honestly, Bill, I wasn't expecting you to to go there. I but literally I, just, I was scrolling through the lines and I saw that and I said, nah, yeah. that flight's way too long. Yeah, exactly. I, I had it written down here in my notes. And the fact that Cal State Fullerton's getting four points, I'm, I'm going to bang that money line. I, I don't know the exact number, but I would assume it's like 160, 170 at a plus four. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's a nice enough number to uh, continue Operation Fade Hawaii. Yep. And uh, last pick for college that I have right now is App State plus five and a half against Georgia State. Georgia State's on the road. Uh, they played three games since the new year. With uh, They played one game on the second, and then they had a two-week layoff. I'm not quite sure if it was COVID-related or whatnot. I'm sure it was. But uh, all three games that they played this year have been against the same team. They played Coastal Carolina three times this year. And uh, I don't. they haven't really played competition like App State. And App State's going to get five and a half points. Give me the five points, App State, at home. Uh, I could even see them outright winning that game. But I'll take the two buckets. Uh, That's a NBA. good pick. I, real quick before, I just thought of another pick I wanted to throw oh, out. Yeah, yeah. Um, Michigan first half. If it's... Minus two, you might as well just take it. I see the powerhouse. Yeah, because it's currently at a three-five full game. Then mm-hmm. like the the first half line won't come out till tomorrow. I I like the over in that game too. It's really all I have right now. I'm sorry to cut you off, but no, it's, it just it's popped in my good. head as like if I'm going to take the three and a half, I might as well take the first half. Yeah, that's fair. Um, the only NBA pick I have right now on the slate for tomorrow is. Cavs plus 9.5. I hate the Nets. I hate the Nets. This big three is going to be the worst thing that ever happened to me. And I'm going to stop it before (laughs) it starts. I let it happen once. I'm going to try and be smarter about it. And I'm just going to uh, take the 9.5 points that they're giving me and take it and probably lose. I was going to say... I don't think <laughs> Kevin Durant lets that happen again. I'm probably going to lose, but I no. am not taking. After the Nets lose by 12 in a double overtime game to one of the worst teams in the league, missing. Miss, I thought I didn't know Sexton was coming back, by the way, in that game. I did not know that by the time we did the podcast on Tuesday night. Um, but that, that dude's a baller. Yeah, he just he did Kyrie dirty. Yeah, um, yeah. but nine and a half. I'm going to take that. I'm not going to change my mind. And NHL, let's see here. Uh, I have two picks. I'm going to go Golden Knights minus one and a half against the Coyotes. They played two games against each other already this season. Golden Knights have won by more than two both times. So I'm going to ride that trend. And I'm also going to go Penguins-Rangers over six and a half. Four out of the last five Penguins games this year have gone over six and a half. Beautiful. I like them. Not bad picks. Not bad. Um, We'll we'll segue that perfectly into my plays because as the NBA guy, I unfortunately have to inform Greggy that he is on the wrong side of that Cleveland-Brooklyn game. That's what I thought Um, about I am going to be taking Brooklyn, whatever that happens to be, straight zigzag theory uh, after such a letdown of a loss to them the other night. There's no way, as Billy said, that Durant is going to let them win back-to-back games against Cleveland, of all teams. Uh, So I will be definitely on the buck uh, for Brooklyn Nets in that game. I'm actually also very intrigued in the James Harden triple-double prop bet. Um, it's not a, there's a lot of value in that and he's got decent chances usually to hit that. Um, another one, I'm going to double, double up on the zigzag theories tomorrow. I'm going to take the Celtics, possibly the Celtics money line over my Sixers. Um, another emotional game between the Sixers Celtics. These two teams have some of the best rivalry, most historic rivalry in NBA history. Sixers are coming off a massive win after getting swept in the playoffs this past season. Joel Embiid put up an MVP-type game. 
This game is made for a Sixers letdown. Uh, the Sixers then coming back home will end up losing it, and they end up playing it right again, turning around to, on Saturday to play Detroit. Three night games and four nights against your arguably two of them against your arch rival on a back to back. I love the zigzag in this game, taking the Celtics. I'm probably going to take Celtics money line and whatever the points are that they get. It'll probably be a six points given to the Celtics, I would guess. Um, my other two picks as of right now, because I have not been able to find any lines just yet, but two guys that I'm looking at. Uh, I'm going to be looking at the Clippers up against Oklahoma City. Uh, Oklahoma City royally screwed me the other night. Do you need a line? Um, so, I have a line. Um, it's 13. Yes, it's, it's 13. 13 that's a, over oh, under that's a, 220. That's a big number. Um, I probably will take over the 220 is where I'll sit at on that one then. Um, the Clippers routinely are one of the most efficient offenses in the NBA right now, and the Oklahoma City is sneaky good with Shea Gilgis Alexander leading the show there. I will probably lean the over on that line. Uh, what do we got as a line then on the Knicks and Sacramento Kings game, boys? Kings four point favorites. All right, I will definitely take the Kings. I will take the Kings money line more than likely. Uh, there's not enough value in that four point favorite right there for me. Um, what? It's like Can hockey all over again. I think two, minus two hundred favorites. Can I help you? I'm just Leave saying. Me alone. Leave me alone. Just Let me do my thing. The money line. Let me do my thing. I might. I don't know what I'm going to take. I might take the money line. I make, might take the minus four. I'm going to end up taking the Kings regardless. Um, Knicks are playing right now as we record against the Warriors, and unfortunately for me, they're playing pretty well because I am on the Warriors, and that's not looking very good at this moment as they I are down by this. 17 with six minutes left in the game. I need them basically to score 21 unanswered points. That's not looking good. Um, Knicks are going to be out on the road again at Sacramento for another late night game. I like the Kings to win this one for sure. Take it to the ice. I have no college basketball plays right now. I need to look at the card. I need to see what's going on. Um, I will say I very much am interested in the Purdue money line. Um, so up in the head, you know just that. Gonna, just going to throw that one out there, and with the good juju I have and the bad juju you two have, there's a decent chance that I hit it. Um, We'll go to the ice for a minute. I got a couple things I'm going to look at for tomorrow. I'm going to be on the Capitals plus one and a half uh, against the Sabers. Uh, Capitals are very beat up right now. However, there is still a difference in class between the Capitals second tier players and the Sabers top tier players. So I will be on them. Uh, I'm going to be on the Blackhawks money line versus the Red Wings, the battle of the probably the two worst teams in the NHL. Um, I'm going to be on the Blackhawks in this one. Blackhawks, even though they stink and have lost four straight, they have played tough. They have played feisty. Patrick Kane is looking like great trade bait to come to the Flyers this year. Um, and then I have two last money lines that I'll probably pick. The money lines in regulation. Golden Knights, I do love that one. I also, I don't know if I'll play it, but I do love that over that Greg was talking about with the Coyotes. The Golden Knights last night, I believe, put up their five or six goals. They, they can just score flat, like flat out. Um, I'm also looking at the Dallas Stars money line against Nashville Predators. Um, so that might end up being a play that we have. So, boys, any questions on my card real quick before we move forward? No, I like the Kings bet. I was, we were talking about it with Jared, mm -hmm. I think. Or we were just talking about it right before we started this. Uh, on a back-to-back, -back, I, I do like the Kings. and I, I might buy a point or two so I can get some value on that number instead of just betting the one, minus 175 because for me to bet the 175 just not worth it. I just don't find the value in it. But I do like that. Yeah, it's some good, decent plays out there. Um, it's let's still get early. We're really here for tonight. We're here on a Thursday, Friday morning now. It's Championship Sunday. It's MMA weekend Fight Island for Greg. Let's get on to football first. Let's talk about the pigskin. Boys, we got some big games this weekend. Let's talk NFC first. Let's go Bucks Packers. What are we thinking? What do we want to talk about? The ageless wonder that is Tom Brady, the MVP that is Aaron Rodgers. What are we thinking? Um, for me, I as a as a fan, as a gambler, as everything I have learned in my years of experience, you do not bet against Tom Brady in January. Just something you don't do. You don't win money betting against Tom Brady in general, especially not 
in the playoffs. That man knows how to do one thing and one thing only, and that's to win. This whole, you know, thing about, oh, they're in Green Bay, the weather's going to adjust to them. This isn't Jared Goff with 100 pins in his hand, can't hold on to the football when it gets under 60 degrees. Mm -hmm. This is Tom Brady. Tom Brady. He's, yeah, he's been playing in cold snow in the playoffs for the past 20 years. I think that's the key right there. You just got right on it. I think that's the key. A lot of people are going to automatically lean. The people who don't know about the sport, who don't know about gambling, they're automatically going to lean. We're going to the frozen tundra. We're going to Lambeau. It's going to be cold. Tom Brady plays in Tampa. It's not the case in this one. Just as you guys just said, Tom Brady spent 20 years playing up in the frigid New England airs. He knows how to play in the cold. Yep. I, I do I want to say one thing about this game is as long as he doesn't continue, excuse me, I'm like, I got the hiccups. If he doesn't, as long as he doesn't keep trying to force feeding Godwin, who can't catch a ball, especially with like, I think he's got two or three broken fingers. And in the cold, that will do, no, do him no good. They need to rely more on Antonio Brown, as shitty as that sounds, that he's still very, very relevant, but he's still a phenomenal receiver. And when they get down to the red zone, they need to rely on their running backs because at the end of the day, we talked about it last week, why I was on the Rams, because the Rams are a great run, run scheme. I, I wouldn't call them a great, great running team this year because of their whole mess of a backfield who they were going to run out each week. But Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette are fucking animals. They're going to eat this defense up. This isn't Cam Makers, which, by the way, can we? Can I quickly say that I told you that bet was going to hit? Nobody listened to me. Did anyway. it over yards? Yeah, over 79 yards. Did we tell you that the Packers were going to beat the Rams? That's neither here nor there. Uh-huh, yeah. Sure. Sure. Know that. <laughs> doesn't want to give looking... us the credit at all, but no. he'll take the credit. I'll take some credit. I was, I was telling you how bad the rush defense was. He needs was. to take you the credit was, because he's not great. getting any winners. Listen, what I have in front of me is a list of reasons why you should take the Packers from like a straight analytical standpoint for against the spread. They all say take the Packers. Every I got a list of literally 20, 20 things. You go to Tampa Bay side, there's like three or four reasons why you should. And guess what? What, what, do we, what do we do best? We fade the public. The Packers are one of the most public teams there is. Everybody loves Tom Brady. Anybody in the Midwest, any, really, anybody north, uh, west of like Pennsylvania, they're Packers fans. I'm, I'm taking Tampa Bay on the money line. They're going to win. What do you think, Greggy? Where are you at on this game? Yeah, I'm, I'm on the same side as Bill. Um, I took Tampa against the Saints, and I didn't – I mean, it was a bad game in general. I didn't, I didn't love how Brady played. Uh, but, you know, he, he can't do much worse in this game, honestly. Um, I think – the frozen tundra idea is irrelevant in this case. We went over that earlier. I think that that narrative has to be just taken away, thrown in the garbage, and put through the disposal. Um, I I think they take this game. I think it'll be a great game, a tight one towards the end. But you know, Brady does his thing, and he pulls away. You know, he comes away with the victory. Uh, I think <laughs> what the Buccaneers need to stop doing. He's using Leonard Fournette so much in the pass game. Honestly, that man, every time he is running and turning his head away before he even catches the ball. And I've never seen a running back drop so many passes with such a limited play on the field. It's, I mean, you clearly you haven't watched any thing about, Eagles games. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't noticed when half the time it's Ronald Jones because he is probably the worst hands in the league. He, between him dropping you know, passes me off, man. that bounce off his chest, in the regular season this year, and him, anytime he touches the ball and gets near somebody, he does an automatic spin move. That was the joke mm. of FFD all year long. Oh, yeah. The second that boy gets near somebody, spin move. 
<laughs> spin move, spin move, spin move. It's his thing. He well, played too much Madden as a kid. It's the way I see this game. I don't really. I'm taking the more experienced team. That's what I'm doing. I'm taking the more well rounded team. I'm taking the guy who you know will win you money in the history of you gambling over Tom Brady. Like Tom Brady, uh, I mean, um, then over Aaron Rodgers. Who's, who has won you a solid bit of money this year? If you bet on the Packers all year long, they've, they've won you a solid bit of money. Mm-hmm. But not, not 20, 20 years worth of Tom Brady money, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's still playing the game. Therefore, I'm, as long as he's playing in a football game, he's, uh, I'm going to be on his side. And it's gonna it's gonna work out more often than not. Hey, there's, there's good logic there. There's good logic. Now, I'm on the other side of both of you. So glad I'm on. I'm on the Packers minus three and a half. Wow. Um, be Philly, do, Philly doesn't want to go analytical. I'll go analytical for you guys who want to hear about it. Packers are 11 and four against the spread in their last 15 games against a team with a winning record. They beat teams that are good. They beat the teams that are bad. Aaron Rodgers is. Much to the chagrin of Billy and I, because we have a future bet on it, uh, is likely going to win the MVP this season. Um, the Packers are just a well-oiled machine. They have been here now the past few years in the playoffs. They've been gearing up for this. They're winning. They're just clicking on all cylinders. The Buccaneers played well enough last week to win the game. Their defense did a very good job. Did I not say the episode prior to that game starting that Devin White coming back would be a huge difference maker? He was a huge difference maker in that game. You could not miss that man all over the field. He is very quickly going to be, if not the best, one of the very best middle linebackers in the NFL. He is one of the fastest linebackers I've ever seen also. That whole Um, linebacking core is the fastest there is. Mm -hmm. the, The duo of Levante, David, and then... Um, Devin White, and then you have Shaquille Barrett coming off the edge as a rusher in an up stance. That's that's deadly. Um, so that's very, I mean, that's interesting to me. However, uh, like I said, I will be on the Packers. Um, the Packers are also leading the league in first half points per game at 18.7, which I find very intriguing. The Buccaneers, while they do have a pretty good defense, um, I think you just, we can may all agree that the diff, there's a significant difference in the Packer offense versus the Saints offense. Uh, one, the quarterback can throw the ball further than 10 yards down the field. Um, when Jameis Winston comes in and throws one pass and gets about a little less than half the amount of yards that your starting quarterback had, that has a problem. Um, so I will be on the Packers in this game. Boys, what about the over-under? What are we thinking on that one while we get into it? What's the number um, right now? Right now, that number is going to be set at 51 and a half. I would say under. That's Meaning a tough under? one. I, it's a very tough one. It's on. a very tough one. It's, it's right in that middle where you're not comfortable in either, I, I, yeah. either way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to sniff I don't, it. I, mean, I don't hate the under. I I'm going to need some more plays. Yeah, I'm going to see where it moves to if anything changes with it. Um, the public public right now is betting the under in this game. That um, sounds which a lock in the le- over. Le- it leads me to an over bet for sure. Um, uh, however, what I, I don't will, know where I'm going just yet. I'll explain why. Like I'll be on the either side. I'll, I'll let me let me just say I'll, I'll take the over. I'm, I'll take the over. These are both decent defenses, like we talked about. Good de- defenses. It, they it leads to. To short yardage, which eventually leads to quick scoring. Both these teams are also high-powered offenses if they, when they want to be. Like at any point, Aaron Rodgers can make one throw and score a touchdown. You know, any any one of the uh, Bucks wide receivers or Gronk or even one of the running backs could break. Like this, this is gonna be a great game. Like I was telling this guy, I was talking to today that I believe. The best four teams in the NFL are playing for to get to the Super Bowl this weekend, and like that doesn't always happen. Doesn't happen very often. So like we're gonna watch some real good football this weekend, regardless. Um, I'll take the over. I'll be on the over. Overs club, baby. Hey. 
Great. Talk to us about the under. You're riding the under, and then I'll I will I'll close out this one. Talk to me about the under. Why you what are you thinking? Why are you picking the under? Uh, you know, for no good reason other than you know, fifty one's a weird it's a weird number, you know. 27, 24, there's, there's a lot of possibilities that this score could come out to. Um, but I, I would just lean towards the under because I, I would think that both of these teams want to get the play-action game going. I mean, that's, that's probably the agenda of any team, to get more options on the table, especially in a game of such high um, you know, magnitude. And I would think if either team were able to get the running game going at first and, you know, kill some clock and whatnot, and then be able to take some shots downfield, you know, in the middle of the game, then, you know, that would be the game plan. But, you know, there's really no rhyme or reason for it. Both teams can put up major points. I gave stats last week um, about the Bucks and, you know, how they were hitting their stride and, you know, averaging 35 points a game. So, I mean, honestly, there's no good statistical reason to take the under. It, it's just a matter of, you know, game script. Yep. I think teams might be, you, you might be right. Like, I'm, I'm on the fence. Like, uh, like I said, I'll explain why I'll be taking the totals. Mm-hmm. Um, One more thing. Me- One more okay. thing on that, actually. Um, like I said, I won't be touching the total in a... Uh, in a wager before the game, but if I were to be, I would, you know, I would observe the first 10 minutes of the game, see how things are going, and see where my live lines are taking me. Mm-hmm. I would even go, yeah, no, you're right, you're right, it's not a bad move. I was going to say take the first half over because you, didn't you give us a stat about the Packers scoring the most points in the first half, or something 18. like that. Eighteen point seven points per half, per game, per first half. I, I'm going to run real so. quick through some ATF uh, over under trends for both teams, if you don't yeah. mind. Over is eight now. The Packers last eight games in January. Over is six and zero. The Packers last playoff games. Over is four and zero. Last four versus the team with a winning record. Over is four and zero in the last four home games versus the team with a winning record. Over is ten and two in the last twelve games, allowing less than one hundred and fifty yards in the previous game. And for the, you go slide over to the Buck side. Over is seven and one in the Buccaneers' last eight games, following a, a win against the spread. Over is six and one in the Buccaneers' last seven as a road underdog. And I have now flip flopped my bet, and I am taking the under. <laughs> All right. Well. With that being said, I will again fade both of these two. I will be taking the over for all the reasons Billy just said. Um, One of the big things that I also love, and just looking at a football standpoint from what I observed watching those games this past week, what is the one thing, aside from just who they are as quarterbacks, that Aaron Rodgers does significantly differently than old man Drew Brees and some guy named Taylor Heineken? You bringing up my boy Heineken? Oh, we're bringing up your boy Heineken. Oh, Heineken's a stud, first off, first yeah. and foremost. What's the one thing that Aaron Rodgers does but does that both of them do not do, and maybe better than any quarterback in the league, maybe not I named just don't Hail Mary. He is the, not necessarily Hail Mary, but he is one of the best deep ball throwers in the entire league. You better put he him throws a beautiful on, on the AFC head. over there, that AFC game. He's not, he's top three. We're not there. We'll talk about that. We'll get there. Calm down. Um, I'm a he's one of the tonight. best deep ball throwers in the league. Watching that Tampa Bay Saints game this past week, I got the notion very quickly that that Buccaneers secondary, it can be feasted upon. It is a very young secondary. It is very, it's a very young, very inexperienced. There's no playoff experience back there. You are relying on a rookie safety to call out the back end for those corners. We saw while Sean Murphy Bunting had a nice, somewhat nice game, he was making dumb penalties left and right, and he was getting beat on a lot of different passes. Aaron right. Rodgers at this stage of his career, not that he might not be, maybe they're, him and Breeze are comparable in their football smarts, has the significantly better arm than Breeze did. So I love that Aaron Rodgers can just go to, go to town and take apart this defense. Now, I also told you guys last week, I believe it was, that the Packers' past the offensive line statistically was the best 
pass percentage and protection percentage in the leagues as well. For all those reasons, I love a, the Packers to hit the over in here with this game because they will be able to just march the ball down the field, and then Tom Brady is going to have to throw the ball to keep up the entire time. So, yeah, I'm on the over. I don't know. I feel like it's, I, I, I don't know. I feel like the line wants you to take the over. I feel well, like it's begging you to take the over and people are taking the under. Listen, if this game gets to 50, I'll take the over. The fact that, for me, the public is going under very heavy right now, just like the both of you guys are going, fade the public. I, I, In a I, sense. I would get... But at the same time, the way I'm seeing it, it's the law of averages. Everything comes back down to the middle. You just read all those stats. 8-0, 4-0, 4-0, 4-0, 7-1, 6-0, 6-1. It's got to be a loss somewhere. Isn't it? There's got to be a loss somewhere. Just like that Giannis it, over and rebound, rebounds. It's maybe coming. In two weeks. Maybe in two weeks, but not this one. Uh, anyway, let's switch it over to the AFC. You have a logo behind your head right now representing one of these teams, so I think I can get a good idea where you're heading with this game just based off of that. Greg, it looks like you have an Islanders room behind you. I don't. I, don't, I can't get a read on where you're going. So let's kick it off. Greg, you start it this time. Where are we going? Chiefs, Bills. What are you thinking? All right. This is the game I'm actually really excited about. Um, it's definitely the more entertaining of the two. And um, I am leaning Chiefs. What's the current line? Minus three? Right now, we have Chiefs minus three. Yeah. And I am going to take that line. As soon as possible. Take it right now. I, I will. Okay. I will. Trust me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to take that line with the assumption that Patrick Mahomes is going to play. I don't, I don't see a scenario in which he doesn't play. I really don't. No, he's think... playing. 1,000% he's playing. Yeah. And, um, you know, if he plays, I see... I see a shootout, you know, like uh, I could, like a Texas Tech, Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield, like that kind of shootout. Not clearly as high. And but, so we're, we're talking about a Baker Mayfield and Patrick Mahomes shootout where Mahomes yeah, you, yeah, played Baker Mayfield. Yes. You guys remember that game. That was a lot of fun. But, no, no, um, I if, I not, if I remember correctly, Mahomes threw eight touchdown passes and about almost 800 yards. Yes. Yeah. That's what it takes. Yeah, one of the most but, amazing games of college football I've ever seen. I agree. I hope. I really hope everybody bet the over in that game. If you I bet the under, I, I got some bad. Uh, news. Greg probably bet the under. <laughs> <laughs> the one team, the, the one team by itself smashed the under. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but yeah, uh, I feel that the Chiefs are the best team. I feel that they will come out of this game victorious. And you know they make a they make a run for consecutive championships. Who that's against, we will see. But uh, you know, no discredit to Josh Allen and the Bills at all. You know they have a, they had a hell of a season. They're having a hell of a season. It's not over just yet. But I do see this being uh, the end of the road for the Bills. And. Um, Oh, Morgan you're, shaking the you're, head. You're saying, you're saying all this right now, and I can just see Billy's brain turning. And he's just thinking, how am I going to slam you on this one? And mm -hmm. what am I going to say that's going to put you on the right side of this pick? Before I get over to Billy, just so we don't circle the wagon a little bit like we are going like to the with Buffalo the Bills. Bills? Um, Greg, Nobody let's circles talk about the wagon like the Buffalo let's Bills. Talk, let's, talk about your, let's talk about your over-under. Was it set at 54? Let's get that in before I move over to Billy and we'll get his discussion. Okay, so, what so do you think? 54. Yeah, 54. That's a lot more comfortable for me in this game compared to the over in the NFC game. Uh, like I said earlier, I think this is going to be a shootout. You know, two of the most prolific offenses, if not the best two offenses in the NFL. Um, I, I see it, this being both, both teams getting into the 30s in this game. I really do. And, uh, you know, possibly coming down to the last drive of the game. But I, I definitely see the over. Okay. My turn. Really? I know that brain's stirring right now. Let's, let's, let's take him to school. 
<laughs> okay. So first off, I would like to say what I was trying to tell you guys before. While I'll be betting have more heavily on the NFC game over the AFC game, it's because I have a future for both the Bills and the Chiefs to make it to the Super Bowl. Which, regardless, I'm winning money whoever wins this game. And I have a future for both of them to win the Super Bowl. I, I am happy. I, no matter what happens in the next three weeks in the NFL, I'm going to be winning money because I'll be hedging the other side. But that's why I'll be playing the over-unders more and play some prop bets, have some fun. I'm going to sit back on Sunday and just enjoy football for the first time in a while without having to really sweat, you know? I don't really, I like, of course I'd be sweating because I'll have money on the line. And, you know, it's not, Oh my god, what a block. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good lord. Um, but, to the game itself, Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> it's like, it's like, there's nothing more American. You know? It's the true <laughs> underdog story. You know, like, we we talk about it a lot. I'm a big Josh Allen guy. He should have won MVP if it wasn't for that, wasn't for the Green Bay Packers and their meddling dog, Aaron Rodgers. <sighs> but anyway, that offense was not on his top performance last week against the Ravens. Can we, bo- can we all agree on that? Agree. 100%. Can we all agree that... Their defense last week played possibly the best game they have all year. I can agree to that as well. I can agree. Oh, like, uh, call out a top three. Without a, a 100% uh, Patrick Mahomes, the Chiefs are easily beatable. Because outside... Uh, they've they've stopped the run pretty well, but they really haven't been able to stop the pass, and that's that's what hurt them a lot in the beginning of the year. And like we're looking at a full sample size of seventeen games, their their defense is average. You're not going to stop a high powered offense. So if you're gonna, if it's going to come down to who it comes down to a final drive. I would lean the Chiefs. But if you give me a full game of a 75% Patrick Mahomes or a 130% Buffalo Bills, I'm taking the <laughs> Buffalo Bills money line. I'm taking the Buffalo Bills money line. I love it. There's, I'm on this bandwagon, whether you like it or not. Stefan Diggs has been playing as the number one wide receiver in football. Josh Allen has been playing besides last game where he looked mediocre, but to his credit, his wide receivers weren't getting open. He's going to run the ball more. They're going to run more option plays. They're going to be more in control of the game than they were last week. For that reason, Buffalo Bills, Wings and Wagons, Buffalo Bills (laughs) Super Bowl champions, heard it here first, Josh Allen MVP. That's going to be the new one there, everybody listening. It's no longer going to be the bread maker. No more bread puns or anything. Wings and it's wagons. It's going to be wings and, wings and wagons. Is I love that saying. Towards. I like wings and wagons much better than the bread maker. Um, I'm the not bread making maker just bread right now. Sounds dumb. Um, I'll give a rebuttal for anyone in a second. But all right, let's talk then before I take over. And, Greggy, any comments you want to make towards this pick? Uh, where do you sit on the over under? 54. I don't know. Because. If Pat, I got to, I got to see, like we talked with Jared before about how healthy Patrick Mahomes is going to be, this and that, and when there's two good offenses, it usually leads to an under. I want to say the over, I really do. Fifty four is definitely doable easily. Both of these teams should easily score thirty points. But I'm going to go the over. I'm not, I'm not going to overthink it. I'm going the over, <clears throat> no doubt in my mind. Lock it in. I'm going money line bills <laughs> with the over parlay. Hit me. Yeah, it's a good choice. I've been I've been hot. Been hot. 
<laughs> That's a bold statement there. <laughs> the stretch, my friend. Um, all right, so we'll swing it over my side. Um, I am going to be on the Bills also. I will be on the Bills money line. I'll probably also just throw the plus three in there just for shits and giggles. My favorite trend right now to know for this game. Uh, last ten games, the Bills are 9-1 and one against the spread. In the last nine games, the Chiefs are 1-8 and eight against the spread. That's a pretty significant number. Now, the Chiefs are 8-1 and one straight up in their last nine games. The only game that they lost was a Week 17 game where they sat the majority of their starters. Um, so the value is there for both the plus three and for the money line. I do love the money line because I also am big on the Bills this year. Billy and I have talked about it a bunch of different times that we've all both agreed that we think the Bills are going to represent the AFC. Um, it, could go, it could go either way. It's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be a good game. Um, I, like Billy said, I like a 130% Buffalo Bills team versus a 75% Patrick Mahomes game, right? Patrick Mahomes, there's no discounting how great of a quarterback he is. However, this will be a little bit different for the Bills. There's no Lamar Jackson back there running around constantly. you got to chase. Mahomes, while he has a mobile quarterback, is not that mobile of a quarterback to nearly the degree of Lamar, right? We, we Obviously, we can all agree to that. Um, so I love the Bills coming forward with this one. Um, I think that they will, you know, we're late. You're going to have a big, big time factor for this game will be the ground and pound game. Um, we don't know if Clyde Edwards Hilaire is going to play just yet. You can tell that they are not giving the ball too much to Le'Veon Bell. Uh, I believe his name is Damian Williams or one of the Williamses that they have. He hasn't been seeing, he's been seeing more carries, but they're still not seeing a ton of carries. So we're going to lean to Buffalo money line on this one. I will um, say, and I don't then, want to cut you off, yeah. Morgan. Yeah. I'm not concerned with how, like, they said that Mahomes has a has this concussion. He's never had a concussion to begin with. No, he, he had like to go through the protocol. Around. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about the foot injury that he did have, and he was clearly in pain, and he was limping before that injury where he had his head snapped off his head. I'm more worried about the foot, and therefore I'm more worried about him being mobile. I think they're going to keep him a little conservative, try to make quicker throws, run him, not run him out of, out of the bootleg as much. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what you're going to get. It's, it'll be an interesting one, that is for sure. You know, you don't know where, exactly like you said, you don't know what's going to happen. This is, I think, far and away the more interesting game of the two for this weekend. Um, both games are going to be great. You know, there's been some duds thus far in the playoffs. You know, after Mahomes went out with the Browns, that game kind of lost some interest, except for the fact that the Browns really should have won the game, except they punted when they shouldn't have. You know, stupid teams make stupid decisions. The Browns are going to Browns, right? You know, yep. Juju, Chase Claypool said it best. Browns are going to Browns. Um, you know, this, these two games, as Billy had mentioned earlier, these are the best four teams. This is the best slate of games that we could have hoped for with the top teams in each conference. Um, switching it up a little bit, going over to the over-under for myself, um, I'm up in the air on either one of these, to be honest, at this point. I probably am going to honestly lean the under, under the 54 number, as opposed to the over that you guys are taking. Um, again, that's another that's public, right public. The public is very popular on the over for this game currently, thinking, you know, two very high-powered offenses. It, to me, it doesn't behoove me to go with the public. Um, it makes more sense for me to stick down lower. Uh, and go with the lower score. I do agree with Greg Ian a little bit that it's going to be a shootout, but I don't think it's going to be a 30-30 shootout. I'm thinking more of a 20-20 slugfest where we are pounding it down each other's face kind of shootout game. So I think the running game is going to be much more. Um, boys, any final thoughts on these two games? Anything prop bet-wise, Greg, that you might be interested in, without knowing the lines, obviously, yet, but anything that you could think of that you might be interested in for these games? Hmm. Um, okay, so I would, hmm, interesting question, okay, I'd be inclined to play yes to Tom Brady throwing an interception, I would also be inclined to playing over Leonard Fournette receptions, as long as it's two. <laughs> because as much as I, I have, have left, it's, it's a number that's funny. 
it didn't seem like play. it was going to be a great. really high number. Like as long as well, it's two. <laughs> as, as long as it's two or under, yeah. They, they, yeah. He seems to, you know, get a good amount of checkdown looks. So, uh, although you know, I said it earlier in the show that I can't stand him, but um, he's getting the looks, and if I play the bet, it makes me money. You know, I like you a little more. Um, yeah, I don't hate either of those picks. I have speaking of interceptions, I do have a question for Billy. Are we going to see the Billy special? with every quarterback throws an interception this weekend. No. Aaron Rodgers no, not does not have to throw an interception. <laughs> He's, that's a great he value on out. that. Yeah. Like, I saw it. I think we were in Discord. We were all in Discord. The value on that line was so great, I just didn't have a choice but to throw $5 at it. I just I didn't have a choice. I was like, hey, maybe that'll hit. You know, how often would that happen? I'm never going to work again a day in my life. What was it? And the way it looks. It, it, was, it ends up being like plus, plus 10,000 10, or plus something. 10, for what? For what? Every, every, every quarterback. Every starting quarterback. Last yeah. weekend? No, the first weekend. I think it was over. Oh. oh, 12. oh with 14. I, I was oh, off by like three. It, was, was, a, it was a wild bet. And I remember seeing Billy post it. And I was like, this is the most electric bet we will see this entire weekend. <laughs> it's going to be fucking fire. It was, it was uh, and it did not disappoint. It was extremely exciting. I, I, I would like a, um, an over in Ronald Jones rushing yards as long as it's not over 80. Anything below 80, I will take it. And I'll run to the bank with that. Um, as always, the Devontae Adams over in receptions is free money. And same with Stephon Diggs. As long as it's not 10. If it's 9 or under, I'm, I'm all about it. I agree with each of those picks. Uh, was, watch out for Gronk and Antonio Brown reception totals. I think those will have value. They don't think they'll be marginalized the right size because those two know how to play in the cold. And Brady knows that, and I think he might lean towards those two a little bit more over Mike Evans, who's a little Florida and Texas boy. And Chris Godwin's got one hand. Utah State stinks. Okay. <laughs> I didn't uh, think you does some, some of the ones that I am interested in for this one Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs over receptions like Billy said I think those are both free money as well those are great picks they will probably both be set around six and a half is my guess um, there have been minimal games all season where the two of them had less than that number that number hits almost automatic every time um, so I do like that uh, I'm looking I probably will do a little sprinkle with a Robert Tanyan anytime touchdown uh, as of right now, he was at plus 105 on that. So not a great, great value. Um, but I can, if I can double my money on a touchdown play, absolutely give it to me anytime. Right? It's, and that's a nice, easy bet for sure. And then we have the Chiefs, another one you have to look at. I'm going to look at the over the yards for Travis Kelsey. Um, that'll likely sit around the 77, 78 mark. Travis Kelsey set the NFL record this year for receiving yards by a tight end with over 1,400. He had the, arguably the greatest season all time of a tight end. Um, that is something that is a weak spot for the Buffalo Bills to cover. Matt Milano, when he came back from injury, has very much struggled in coverage. He is a very nice downhill running back. He's not necessarily a bad coverage linebacker. This season, he has not been great in coverage. Um, I do not think that the – I think while the Buffalo Bills have arguably the best safety tandem in the league with Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde, um, we're talking about a man that is Travis Kelsey. Um, there's, I, I love his over in his yards, probably like a touchdown for him as well. He's unstoppable. I don't really even care who's under center in that game. I think I still like his over because he's the guy who's going to get the ball into his hand. Um, I like so yeah, that. that's kind of like the top well. things that I'm kind of interested in. I'm sure I will have much more that we're interested in. Uh, boys, before we move on, any last thoughts of the NFL? I will. Can I, I just want to say something about that Kelsey line. I think it's going to be closer to 90 to 95. Last week it was eighty five. If I yeah. have the over eighty five, yeah, there's no shot. Even, I think, I think even if it's in the eighties, say because I thought originally it's like seventy seven, give or take. If it hits eighty four, I think I'm still going to go the over. I, mean, um, I think there. I would honestly, I think I'd bet that over up to probably about ninety two, ninety two and a half or so, um, just because of what what he's doing right now, the m- momentum, the chemistry that that offense has. 
They're going to have minimal distractions also with that offense because Eric Bieniemy doesn't look like he's going to get a head coaching job. So he will be focused and looking out for kind of revenge on the NFL out there for not giving him a shot when he has been this much ballyhooed offensive coordinator all season. Listen, he chose, um, can I just say, he chose not to take interviews last year when he was the hot, the number one mm-hmm. option. Oh, yeah. I don't want to hear it. Oh, yeah. And now the, the, very, go, the only spot left is Houston. Yep. And Nobody he didn't even, job. never even interviewed or anything with the Eagles. We got our new head coach today, Coach Nick Serrani. He fits in great with us. Delco scumbags and nice little American. All right, all right, all right, all right. Joe Girardi are going to be down on South Street slamming cheese steaks and beers in fucking Jet Road lot. It's going to be a beautiful sight. Anyway, moving on after I get my little Philly spew out there real quick. Welcome to Greg's MMA Corner. Uh-huh. He just puts you in a body bag. He's got his picks for Fight Island this week. Greggy, give it to us. All right, boys. Um... My bad. Had to move this. Uh, yeah. I've been looking forward to this segment of the show all night long. He I have. Is, he has not stopped talking to us about MMA and the picks that he has. Uh, what's the guy's name? Umar Nagrogadev? No, um, no shot. Umar, <laughs> Umar, Umar Nurmagomedov. Nurmagomedov. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, one of these days. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so on uh, Wednesday morning, I had him as my first play on the card. I had uh, the under in his fight, under two and a half rounds. And I mentioned on the show, I didn't play it though, but I did mention that I think he'll win by submission. And he won and subbed him out in the second round. That was a plus 170 winner. Cashed out to the bank. Unfortunately, the next four picks were not cashed. Neil Magny definitely let us down. He got beat up. He got beat up, you know. Chiesa, he uh, he definitely looked like the better wrestler in that fight. And uh, Magny had no answers for about 22 minutes of that fight. You know, he came on in the last round. That was probably the only round that he won because every judge gave him one. But, yeah, that was a disappointment. And um, the other fight was... Uh, Lee Ron Murphy. I would have loved to been able to tell you guys to take him on the money line. But it was a 350 money line, and I don't suggest that to anybody. Uh, he's knocked out everybody previously, so I suggested that. But what I did not know going into that fight, and I will take all the heat in the world for that, was uh, Andrade, who he fought in 29 fights, has never been knocked out. That is my fault to the public for not letting you know that information previously. But he did end up winning the fight. But for our bets, they don't cash. Moving on to this weekend. UFC 257, boys. I got to get you more hype. Look at, look at that smile. Look I'm, wait, at that. I'm waiting to hear That's a the winner. the first smile I've seen from Greg all night long. Because, <laughs> like, man, because Saturdays are my favorite day. <laughs> not not really Monday, Tuesday, all day, the past man. five days that he hates. They've been <laughs> bad days. We got UFC on day Wednesdays. Seven. Come on. All Greg, right, working for the weekend. Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, so we're going to start off this card with the main event of the night: Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier, round two. I have Conor McGregor money line at a minus three hundred five. I know I just said I don't recommend taking lines that big, a.k.a. Lee Ron Murphy. I am taking Conor McGregor, minus 305 on the money line. I have no choice. <laughs> I think he's going to win this fight handily. This fight happened six plus years ago, and McGregor knocked him out in the first round. Dustin Poirier at that point, different fighter. He was up and coming, making his name. And you, when you call out McGregor and you have, a, you, know, you have wins to back it up, he's going to fight you. At that point, you're going to lose. And that's what happened. He got knocked out in the first round. And I do expect McGregor to knock him out as well this time around. Uh, I'm not going to call a first round knockout because that would be silly. Although the prop line is uh, favorable. I think it's like a plus 450. 
Mm, but, I will check for you right now. I'm, I'm literally on it. Cool. If you have that, that'd be great. Is, but Conor McGregor first round by itself is plus one fifty five. To to knock him out in the first doesn't round. say knockout first round. I don't have that yet. It's probably just to win in the first, like to take it in the first round. Um, but I'm going to take McGregor by KO or TKO at a minus one seventy seven as well. So it gives me leeway to uh, you know get that win anywhere within the twenty five minutes of this fight, which I expect to go shorter than that. Um, my next play, I- I'm only looking at three fights in this uh, on this card, although it's a 14 card fight. I'm going to go Albazi minus 110 against Zumagalov. It's uh, I believe it's the first call, the first match on the card. Albazi is a minus 110. Uh, they're both minus 110 actually. Zumagalov should have won his first fight, uh, but he he got robbed on the scorecard. Honestly. He, he beat up on the other guy. I don't know how he lost that fight. But although he should have won, was not impressive. I'm, I'm going to tell you now, it was not an impressive fight at all. Um, Albazi, he did look impressive in his first fight. He subbed the man out. Uh, I believe it was the second round. So I'm going to go with Albazi there. And my last fight on the card... I'm going to go with newcomer to the UFC, Michael Chandler, at a plus 115 against Dan Hooker. I can't stand Dan Hooker. I think he is a fraud. Hold on. It Can doesn't have anything not... to do with his last name? Yeah, it does, I was going to say, we need to acknowledge Morgan laughing at the word Hooker. <laughs> oh. Like a four-year-old. Morgan's a child. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do math. We've established this. I'm a child. Yes, that is right. correct. Dude. But yeah, Michael Chandler, he's coming from uh, the Bellator uh, Association of Mixed Martial Arts. You know, it is 1B to, U- to uh, UFC's 1A. And he's, a, he's been a champion. He is top class. I've seen him fight a few times, and uh, he's very skilled. Dan Hooker, he's you know he's top ten ranked fighter in that weight class, but I I don't see anything special about him. I think Chandler comes in, makes a statement to the UFC, and ultimately is a contender for the belt. Ooh, so uh, hot take. Yeah, well, well, early on, early in the career, hot take. Honestly, once he wins this fight, he's going to be ranked in the top ten. That's, that's okay. kind of just how it works. He has pedigree just from his name and his background. You know, everyone knows about Michael Chandler. They've been trying to sign him to a UFC contract for a long time. But he's, uh, you know, he's been loyal to Bellator. And now he's finally coming over. So I'm excited about that. He's, he's at a prime age of like 32, I believe. And, uh, you know, he's got, he's got plenty of time to go for a title shot. Yeah, so I'll recap that real quick. I have Chandler against Hooker. Chandler minus 115. I have Albazi at a minus 110. And a McGregor minus 305. And minus 177 for KO or TKO. Cool. I, I will have... I do have a, a bet for UFC. I will be taking... McGregor knockout first round as well as McGregor knockout second round for the props and just in general because I do believe he will knock him out I'll be taking to win by to win by knockout for on my book it's minus 200 so I'll take that over right. then just a straight money line which is I believe is free money and don't get me wrong because I do know like I know the main fighters Poirier is a very good fighter mm-hmm. but yeah he is he's no joke no, he's not, but McGregor's in a different class. He, like People shit on him. People don't like him. That man works harder than anybody else. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And uh, Poirier just beat Dan Hooker last time out. I mean, Poirier... He's Stop only... laughing, Morgan. It's not Morgan. that funny. <laughs> Come on. It's funny. Okay. Just call him Danny. Just call him Danny. 
Yeah. Danny Boy right here. Yeah, so Poirier beat Danny last time out. And <laughs> he's only lost one fight, uh, two fights since Connor's fight six years ago. One was, you know, way back to Michael Johnson years ago. And the other fight was as recent as two years ago, and it was to Khabib. Khabib. How do you, how do you say his last name? I'm, 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 I'm so not trying, disappointed I'm, in I'm, you. That's, that's all it I'm, is. I'm, I'm, giving it a, I'm giving it a break. I'm, gonna, I'm still focused on it. I, I'm still focused on the hooker part, but it's Nurmagadagov. That was the closest you've been so far. That was good. <laughs> that was almost natural. Yeah. It's like he wasn't I trying. Was actually, you had it, you just mixed actually, parts around. I pulled it up on Google and I had it phonetically spelled out the word for me. And you still got it so, wrong. You still said it wrong. I still got it wrong, but we're making some progress. Nurmagomedov. Nope. nope. That's enough. I've had enough uh, of him. Nurmagomedov. Yeah. But, all right, uh, Billy, I don't have too much intake on MMA. I don't know it as much. Obviously, I'll be watching the McGregor fight. Uh, McGregor's fucking awesome to watch. Um, I'll be on McGregor. If Billy, be- or Billy, if Greggy believes in, what's it, under two round of the knockout or whatever it is, I will, I'm going to ride with what Greg knows because he knows MMA better than I do. I won't go nuts on the betting of it, but I want to sprinkle some in there. I'm going to ride with him. He knows much more than me, even though he got the couple picks wrong with the, um, I don't know how to say it, Magni, whatever the guy's last name is. I'm going to say these guys' yeah, last name. That was just tough. He uh, just we, didn't come out hot. I watched that fight. I'm not a big fight guy, so I don't obviously know yeah. who Omar Nurman the Kebab is. But um, we, we can I'm tell that, you, that you, you're doing. not much of a fighter. I know Philly's not known to be much fighters, you know. Uh, you, guys, mm-hmm. you guys had that fake Rocky movie. But besides that, you guys don't know shit about fighting. Whoa. You don't come at rock. Now, boys, hey. is, it time to, is it time to introduce? Yes. Yes, it is. The segment? We should have introduced it yesterday. I would have won. Yes, oh, so yeah, gonna, you did have that. We are going to be bringing All right. It took me a second to get my brain to catch up there and remember what the segment was that we're talking yes. about. Yes. But it's there. I've remembered. So... We do have a very special segment that we are going to be bringing forward every episode coming to us. Um, the boys here, we love to gamble. We love good, healthy competition. We love unhealthy competition where we are just making fun of Billy relentlessly, where we are just going to town on one another. Um, we will not let, we've said this last week, we will not let Billy's communist agenda take over this show. Um, so, with that being said, we have a very big special treat we're going to do. We're now in a competition, the three of us, to who can bet the biggest underdog this season and win it. Um, we did not play this the other night. However, Billy would like to acknowledge, and yes. I don't know the exact number, but I, Billy had a massive underdog winner. Yeah, I had a plus 450 VMI underdog, which I talked about on the show that they were 7-1 straight up at home. I talked about how they should easily cover the 10, which wound up moving to 12, which is the wrong side. I knew it right away. And I, literally, as we said it, and like I even, you guys were talking about Creighton and Providence. I thought Providence would win that game, which they did. That was another plus 400 winner. I I mean, I, like, like I said, on Wednesday, I was on fire. I saw the card like it was the back of my hand. And I, we're not going to count it. I don't want it to count because it wasn't announced on the show. Therefore, we won't count it because Greg didn't want to lose fair and square. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> uh, we said, I said, hey, let's start it now. They said, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't want Can't any do of that. This is going to be a, yeah, a live so, twice a week thing. This is exactly. It's like Greg, this is going to be a live thing. We're introducing this now. So we wipe our slates clean a little bit. We don't have... We'll see. We're going to start this and going tomorrow. We will not include any of tonight's slate in this because we had not introduced this to our viewers and listeners yet. So starting tomorrow or today with Friday, January 22nd's game and going forward, we will have a competition going yep. forward. We'll do, let's do a month. We'll do a monthly competition. Mm-hmm. That way it's just not sitting at some crazy number for the entire year. Exactly. So we will do a, make it a monthly competition. Who wins the biggest underdog each month? Um, this will start up this week, so we're looking for those kind of picks on Twitter pages, on the pod, when we release the episodes. 
A um, couple disclaimers with that. We will only really be making our plays off of four, the four sports, hockey, basketball, when baseball comes in football. That includes college basketball. This will not include golf plays, table tennis plays, soccer plays. This is going to be the big four sports that we're working with. Um, so we won't go absolutely nuts, and I won't bet the craziest team against Real Madrid because Real Madrid stinks right now. Um, not going to do that. Um, team that just, I don't even know how to say their name, the team that just beat Real Madrid, I believe yesterday, was like plus 4,400 to beat them. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and ended up winning. Yeah. So uh, we won't be playing any of those ones that are wild. The teams that we play, you can easily look up and find out who they are quite simply. We will not be playing like I am playing right now, the Chinese Basketball Association, my Sichuan Blue Whales. I will not be playing them as an underdog um, in this capacity. So, boys, any thoughts that you want to throw in there with this new set? I know who I'm picking. All right. You want to you talk about your pick or you I don't save need it a to, little bit? Because I don't have a reason to back it up. Okay. Besides, I, they I score that. a lot. <laughs> that works for me. Uh, that works for me. Board, that's all I, ha- I had two, but I'm, I'm sticking with one. I'm going North Dakota over South Dakota State tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. on a Friday night. I will be streaming this game. You know, maybe I'll even go live for this game. If this game gets closed down at the end, who knows? Is it plus 7.75? I will gladly take that. I will start it off hot. I've been on North Dakota a few times. South Dakota scores the hell out of the ball, but luckily for North Dakota, so do they. Uh, South Dakota, I do know they rely heavily on the three. So if they come out to a cold start or they just get cold throughout the game, here we go, plus 775. I'll take it. Give it to me. So, you know, he gets that win there. That's that's a big statement win for sure. That sure uh, is. Sorry, boy. I have no big one just yet. Um, I'm sure I will look at the car, look the card over the fine tooth comb. Uh, and find something that I like. Uh, Wait, but I, like I thought we were just doing it every week. I, I have more time to think about this if I don't want to. We I just, didn't think we did. You can make a pick. You I thought we were doing pick. it weekly. Oh, we're going to make it weekly, absolutely. But the winner will be... I was going to do the winner is each month there's a winner. And we can do it weekly. We do enough. I thought, episodes, I, we, we I thought what we weeks. discussed was once a winner hits, you have to bet something higher than that. That was what yes. you talked about. All You're right, making... let's do it. I'm fine with that. I mean, yeah. This is this is this is this is a you idea. This is this is your territory. This is a, this is a Greg idea. Yeah. So I was thinking we announce it every episode on here. Let's do it on and... Thursdays. We'll have extra time. Okay. You want to do so just once a week? Yeah, we'll do it once a week. We'll do it on Thursdays. Okay. Because we do more. We have more NBA on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So. Okay. All right. Um, so, Morgan, I'm assuming you don't have a pick right now? I Whatever I have, I will throw on my card tomorrow. Okay. All uh, right. Prepared for that at this moment, though. I have. We're call it, let's call it the underdog story. The we, underdog story. The underdog story. We're going to be having a bunch more uh, uh, segments that come up that will be smaller clips for you guys to take a look at, um, such as our new segment, Birthing of a Degenerate. That'll be a special segment with that we were, are filming and doing for you guys. Um, boys, any final thoughts that you guys want to throw out there before we shut this thing down tonight? Yeah, my pick for underdog story. <laughs> yeah, hit him. What do you got? I'm going to go Dixie State. That was my other pick, baby. I love I'm, it. I'm going to go it. Dixie State at home against Grand Canyon. I love that pick. For no reason. Other than Dixie State is at home. <laughs> <laughs> the home they're, team. They're getting 11. I love that. No, I do like that. I, they cover the 11 tomorrow. Yeah, they probably do, but they're plus 475 underdog. And that's going to be my pick for tomorrow. I love that pick. <laughs> I do. Greg, Greg knows my love and affection yeah. for Dixie State. I do. <laughs> I do. Oh, that's so good. There you see, you see, you see how this is going to work. Anyone watching right now, we're finding the craziest lines. You know, he's on Dixie State. Um, I'm just going through the book right now. I might have to jump on Troy at plus six hundred against Coastal Carolina. I have no Troy's. idea. We'll do some. We'll do some research. We'll find something. We might just go big, big and pick one that 
If I win, you guys ain't coming back from. I'm gonna go. I think I might go Cal Poly plus eleven hundred versus UC Irvine. Because um, if I win that right off the jump, it's mine. That's not regular it. Cal Poly. That's Cal Poly SLO. I don't know who the heck either of them are. Yeah. But if that's a big number. I Dude, went UC Irvine to- went to a tournament last year. Yeah. yeah well, the year before. Sure. Okay. Works for me. Um, that's interesting to me. Boys, as I said before, I rudely skipped over Greg's pick because I, I zoned out for a few moments. I apologize for that. All Any right. thoughts that you guys want to throw out there? I actually have one prop for UFC that I want to I finish just off keep with. skipping over this guy. Every- no, no, it's all good. I actually just remembered. Uh, so I did say that I like Al Bazzi against, um, what's his name? Numagalov. Numagalov. Yep. So, I like Albazi at a minus 110 in that fight. I would love for everybody to sprinkle the plus 500 to win by submission. I'm on it. Consider it done. Is that, with that, that's, what, that's what his underdog bet was going to be. That is exactly yeah. what it was going to be. He was like, oh, could I, could I use the MMA? No, bitch. That's <laughs> exactly can. what it was going to be. And then you guys <laughs> kind of just told me I couldn't do it before I even announced it. So, uh... I wanted to make sure I got that in on here at some point. That no, was a good pick. Thank you. You got to set some rules and guidelines here. All right. I'm gonna, for a third time. Boys, what do we got to close it out? Anything? Yeah, I got, I got something. For anybody who's listening that it likes that idea, I'll, I'll explain it on Twitter tomorrow morning. This, this way there's actual rules and all that. Don't worry about it. We're rambling on. We've lost a lot of money today. Nah, we're all upset. We're going good today. You two well, lost a lot of money. Well, hopefully, you know, the, Shish- the Shishwan Blue Whales co- cover this live bet for me. You know, Morgan did help me out, give me a winner tonight. I helped myself out, got myself a winner by fading Morgan tonight. You know, but all this, I, that none of that matters. It matters to me because I won money, but I didn't win you guys money. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to entertain you, win you money, make you guys better gamblers, fade us, tail us, regardless Talk shit to us in the DMs. Talk shit to us under our comments, under our tweets. Um, in the in the near future, I will be making the Instagram account. It's just going to take some time. There's a lot going on. A lot of moving pieces, trying to figure out what works best for us, what doesn't work best. Um, follow us on Twitter at Betting Diagonal. Follow me at BillyFFD. Follow Greg at GershGreg. He's got his little cute little dog. He's got a picture now. Give that man a follow. He tweeted his first ever tweet on his Dude, own page. Talk, talk about Greg right now. Oh, everybody listening and watching. What a true comeback story this is. <laughs> From the guy whose first tweet as a co-host of this show. Hey, guys, it's Greg. Thank you. Now, now where hey, he's tweeting here. a lot of pics and putting a bunch of content out there each day. The kid has learned how to tweet. Faster than I learned how to ride a bike. Faster than he learned how to do math because he still can't do math. <laughs> still can't do it. <laughs> um, yeah, and follow Mo Watts twenty six. Morgan is on Twitter pretty much nonstop. He won't answer my text messages, but he'll tweet at me all day. Um, Priorities. <laughs> yeah, no. Mm. Mor- Morgan's a great follow for anybody who doesn't even like gambling. He he's got he's got all sorts of filthy nonsense going on in his in his mind. Um, that's about all I have, guys. Um, make sure you like, follow, subscribe on YouTube. Give us a comment. I'm going to run a, some sort of giveaway for somebody who, uh, who actually listens to the show, listens to the whole thing on YouTube. Uh, I'll figure something out one of these days and just throw it in the middle of the episode. We're going to throw a random quiz out there for someone. I'll give somebody a free play. You got something, something like that, you know? We'll do something nice for y'all. Yep, a lot of big and things we'll coming, guys. You, we'll, we'll let you throw a guest pick out there for us to put out on the air maybe when <laughs> you get you fo- some followers to your picks Love all it. right boys best of luck hopefully we uh greg turns this this cold streak around i'm really hoping for you bud pulling for yeah. you morgan i hope you lose every bet tomorrow really don't care um <laughs> i'll bounce back i i do these things where i win six games lose six games anyway best of luck i'll see you guys next week you degenerates <laughs>